but let's go ahead with the time stoppers. All right. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Pat Tracy. I am the chairman of the Albuquerque Metro Crime Stoppers. And I wanna thank you all for having me here to speak tonight about who we are, what we do, what questions you may have. Um, first of all, let's talk about what is Crime Stoppers. We're a nonprofit 501c3 organization. We solicit anonymous, and that's very important, anonymous tips about crimes and criminals. Okay, we pay cash rewards for $2,500 for homicides, up to $2,500, and up to $1,000 for tips for other uh, crimes and criminals to be brought to justice. Um, we currently serve Bernalillo, Sandoval, Valencia, Torrance counties, and just like recently, just like right now, we just brought on Rio Arriba. So we are not just Albuquerque. We are more central New Mexico, you might say. Um, our mission statement basically is Albuquerque Metro Crime Stoppers is a central New Mexico nonprofit organization that makes our community safe by partnering with law enforcement and the media to solicit and reward anonymous tips that prevent, stop, and solve crime. Um, now let's talk a little bit about where did, where did we come from? Actually, Crime Stoppers is started right here in Albuquerque in 1976. We are now not only nationwide, we are worldwide, which um, speaks a lot for what we do and how successful we are. Um, it was actually started here by a detective by the name of Greg McAleese. And how it originated was that there was a senseless, brutal murder of 20-year-old Michael Carmen. Carmen was fatally shot during a robbery while working at a local gas station. Detectives with the Albuquerque Police Department focused on stimulating community involvement and participation and took advantage of electronic media and publicized unsolved crimes. Oh, excuse me, we can't see the view graph. Oh, change that to uh, speaker view with slide sharing. Uh, yeah, Kelly. Okay, so um, within just a few hours after the, they did, back then they did recreations of the crime because they, they didn't have the uh, lapel uh, cameras and everything. So they did recreations and they did a recreation on Channel 7, KOAT, and detectives received a phone call from an indiv individual who recalled hearing a loud bang and saw a car driving away from the gas station. Within 72 hours, detectives arrested two men and charged them with the murder of Carmen and a string of armed robbers. So that's pretty much how it began. Um, the facts are this, very, very important. Tipsters always remain anonymous. Crime Stoppers is a worldwide program. Crime Stoppers, oh, excuse me, crime costs Americans more than $300 billion each year. Crime Stoppers has helped law enforcement remove more than 800,000 criminals from our streets. Crime Stoppers has helped law enforcement clear more than 1 million cases and seize nearly 3 billion in drugs. Crime Stoppers is a supportive arm of neighborhoods, businesses, schools, and law enforcement. Crime Stoppers is a nonprofit organization that relies on donations and fundraising to fund the program. Okay. Um, what's interesting, we were at a conference back in October, um, and what we found out is that only about 30% of tip money is picked up 
which indicates that it's not the money, but the anonymous, anonymous, the anonymous that works. People want to do the right thing. They don't necessarily want the money, but remaining anonymous is what is most important to them. And now we have what we call a campus crime stoppers, which students, parents, teachers, and staff members can call the 24 hour hotline, download the P3 Tips app or visit p3tips.com. Report crime that happens in and around your schools. Drugs, graffiti, vandalism, weapons, and gang activity are all crimes that affect your safety and the ability to learn. The information is provided to law enforcement or administrators of the schools. All information is validated prior to any action being taken. Tipsters are eligible for a reward if the information is validated. Now, rewards range from $10 to $250 in the form of gift cards to students, such as Amazon, Starbucks, gas card, et cetera. We don't actually give the students cash, okay? We found that it's, it's better to, to do the gift cards. Um, what we have is Crime Stoppers, Campus Crime Stoppers provide students, faculty, and staff a safe, informal, and anonymous system to give information about criminal, criminal activity, threats, and or weapons without fear of retaliation. That's a big deal with students is the fear of retaliation. So they can download it right onto their phone. They can call. They could go in on the web and, and report the crime, okay? Um, how, do, how do you report crime to Crime Stoppers? You know, there's several ways. There's a 24 hour hotline. It's 505 843 STOP. There is no caller ID on this line. We have no way of knowing who is calling. There's also a mobile app, P3 Tips, and then on the web, www.p3tips.com slash 531. So, And then this is basically how it works. The tipster contacts Crime Stoppers through one of the areas that I just mentioned and leaves anonymous tip. No identifying information is collected, transmitted, or stored. When they submit a tip, they are assigned a tip number, okay? The tip is scrubbed by the Crime Stoppers coordinator with um, APD to ensure no identifying information is contained within the tip. It is then, the tip narrative is then sent to law enforcement, which detectives are working which type of cases, okay? After the investigation concludes, the agency provides disposition of the tip. Um, then the board of directors of Crime Stoppers uh, at our monthly meetings, we vote and we approve the tips. Okay. Then the tipster takes their tip ID to the bank and collects their reward. No identification or signature is required. So we don't call the tipster back. The tipster has to keep calling back to Crime Stoppers given their tip number to see if there is a reward available for their tip since we have no way of contacting these people okay um we did have a a case not that long ago of school vandalism and it was actually in 2018, it was at, uh, I believe it was El Dorado High School. And it was, um, 
It says the APS police department needs assistance in trying to identify these individuals who shot and damaged several cameras at El Dorado High School during the evening of November 21st, 2018, then shot out and damaged approximately 27 windows at Oñate Elementary School the evening of the 26th. And they got surveillance from the schools and it was made available uh, to the media. And they actually did get um, a tipster advised the suspects involved were seen certain address, Albuquerque, wearing the same clothes they had on the night of these incidents. Tipster advised they were also standing near a vehicle that matched the description of the vehicle that was seen. And the tipster advised the vehicle is possibly a Camry, blah, blah, blah. Tipster advised this is all the information they had at the time. Well, it worked. These two teens were arrested and charged with these crimes. So it, this is proof that it does work. And this is just when we started doing campus crime stoppers. So it's been successful. Um, mainly with campus crime stoppers, what we're seeing right now is um, drug dealers on campus. That's what we're getting a lot of information on, drug dealers. So that is the, the main thing that, that's being reported at this time, okay? And um, our liaison with um, the Albuquerque Police Department, her name is Sonia Marquez. And so she works very, very closely with us. And she's our liaison between us and the law enforcement agencies, not just APD. So um, uh, that's about all I have to say about what we do, who we are. What questions do you all have for me? How are you uh, publicizing this on campus? We actually have posters at the schools, which where there's a, a QR code, God, I can't even think, QR code that they can just scan into their phone. We also do go and we do um, presentations at the schools. Mainly we go to high schools, but we have gone to middle schools also. So we do do that. Are you working with UNM? Oh, yes, absolutely. And you get cooperation from students and faculty there? Yes, we do. We do. And we work very closely with campus um, police. So I recall that somewhere, and maybe touched on it, but if you say that you made a tip that was useful, then you jeopardize your reward. Is that no. true or not? No. If you violate your own anonymity, well, we won't. Yes, absolutely. Um, we only do anonymous tips, only. So even if they did um, identify themselves on the tip, that will not go to law enforcement. That is scrubbed. So and, and even after the fact. Uh, that you know, there's a rest be, uh, that was made to say, I made that tip. Uh, that, that, that doesn't work. You wouldn't be able to confirm or deny it. You have no idea. Nope. Here's, oh, there you have it. We give them, all we know is we give them a tip number. Our tip is taxable. They have a question. No. No, they're not. Okay. Because it's under the... Um, the reporting limit no, they're not. We do get enhanced rewards from private citizens or businesses that we can pay out up to ten thousand, but it's rare. Um, we don't really like to do that because we don't want to violate the Bank Secrecy Act. So. Uh, Lin Linda, why don't you sit over there on the corner 
and you can come up and, and be closer to yeah this is this is our seat for public questions and comments okay because if we get you closer to the microphone and, and the video so ask the question and we'll sit back like Sure. Okay. If, you, if you don't want to keep talking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just curious, um, since you've been um, active since 1976, what amount of contacts do you get for tips versus how many of them pan out? Are, I mean, because you have to have the manpower to do the research. It's, it's hard to say. So um, is it really, really We active? average about 250 to 275 tips per month. Um, and what actually gets payouts? Maybe five to ten. But then again, like I said, only thirty percent of those are picked up. So, so they're not doing it just for the reward. Absolutely, and that is what we have been so thrilled about. People are wanting to do the right thing. And I could tell you from the law enforcement perspective, I mean, we've had burglary cases, robbery cases, where a lot of times um, if, the, if the forensic evidence isn't there, such as DNA or fingerprints, um, but there is surveillance images, um, Crime Stoppers is a great partner to use to, to put that out there. And uh, we've been very successful in solving this, a lot of these like felony property crime cases. Just recently, um, homicide was at $1,000 within the last six months because of the homicide rate here. We upped it to $2,500. So, okay, it looks like we have a uh, community member, Peter. You have a question or a comment? <coughs> Uh, yes, I do have a question, and I'm sorry I didn't realize the question and answer. Um, you say to put the questions in the chat. The chat is disabled, just to let you know. Um, I had a, I, my question is uh, maybe a little controversial, but was Crime Stoppers involved in the case as far as the schools? The tip where the woman, the girl, was um, Ill, was arrested. Falsely, it wasn't her, and it wasn't checked back. Was Crime Stoppers involved in that? I do not believe so, but I couldn't say for sure. Doesn't ring a bell to me. Now you're familiar with the case, correct? Not exactly. The police, the police, can explain it because it was a big deal. She was kept in jail for a week, and there's lawsuits now. You know, we wouldn't have anything to do with that. We just take tips and we turn everything that we have over to law enforcement. So we don't have anything to do with the arrests. Um, I guess, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Who funds Crime Stoppers? Um, it's all donations. All donations. We do, um, well, we are currently working on having our biggest fundraiser that we do. We do our annual Heroes Luncheon, which is on September 23rd, where we honor officers that have gone beyond the call of duty, either in their communities or on the job. And it will be at the Embassy Suites. We've already uh, named the officers who are going to be honored. So uh, that is one of our biggest uh, fundraisers. Dignitaries will be there speaking. 250 to 300 people will be there. So um, we haven't honestly been able to do this event for like three years because of COVID. We also have lost a lot of exposure because of COVID. So we're trying to get our word back out there, who we are, what we do. If any of you know any 
uh, community involvement that you would like one of us to come to and speak, please let me know. I, I have business cards I can give you. I have been working um, closely with the three news channels, so. I actually wants to know how many photographs nationwide are there? I'm not exactly sure. Um, I would say, well, I can tell you that at the conference last October, there were 500 people there. So, we have any more questions? No comments.